Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about impulse and momentum. Our objectives for today are going to be to relate mass, velocity, and linear momentum for a moving object and calculate the total linear momentum of a system, to relate impulse to the change in linear momentum and the average force acting on an object, to calculate the area under a force versus time graph and relate it to the change in momentum of an object, also known as an impulse, and to calculate the change in momentum of an object given a force function as a function of time. All right, with that, let's dive in and talk about what momentum is. Momentum is a vector quantity that describes how difficult it is to stop a moving object or how difficult it is to turn a moving object. The total momentum of a system is the sum of all the individual momenta of the parts of that system. In the equation for this, momentum represented with a P is equal to mass times the velocity vector. Let's talk about the relationship between force and change in momentum. If we start with Newton's second law, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. We also know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So I could write this as m dv dt. And since mass is a constant in this situation, I can slide that inside the derivative. Therefore, force equals the derivative with respect to time of mv. But we also know that momentum is mv. Therefore, I could rewrite this as force is equal to the derivative of momentum with respect to time. What does that mean? If a force acts on a particle, it changes the particle's momentum. Now, on the other side of the coin, if a particle's momentum changes, a force must have acted on it. A key equation to help us understand impulse momentum and the relationship to force. Let's take a look at a sample problem. The momentum of an object as a function of time is given by p equals kt squared, where k is some constant. What is the equation for the force causing this motion? Well, let's go right to force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time. And if we worry just about magnitudes, not about directions, that'll be the derivative of kt squared. Since k is a constant, the derivative of kt squared is just going to be 2kt. There's the force that must have acted upon that object as a function of time. All right, let's talk about the impulse momentum theorem how impulse changes momentum. We just determined that force is equal to the derivative of momentum with respect to time. We could rearrange that then to say that force times the differential of time is the differential of momentum. And if we integrate both sides now from zero to some time t, from some initial momentum at time zero to some time t, what we're going to get on the left-hand side, the integral of f dt, force time, or the area under a force time graph, we're going to call impulse, capital J. That's equal to force times some time interval if we have a constant force. And on the right-hand side, the integral of the differential of momentum across some time is just going to be that change in momentum, delta p. So what we've really shown is impulse is force times time, which is equal to the change in momentum of an object. Impulse changes momentum. If we look at this from a graphical representation, an impulse is the area under a force time graph. It's equivalent to the change in momentum. So if we want to know how much the momentum changes, if we calculate the area of a force time graph, whatever the shape of that is, the force times time, integrate all that, that'll tell us how much the momentum of an object changes. Forces over times, or impulses, change momenta. Let's take a look at a sample problem and see what we can do with it. The graph here indicates the force on a truck of mass 2,000 kilograms as a function of time. In the interval from zero to three seconds, determine the change in the truck's velocity. So I'm gonna focus here on the time from zero to three seconds. And since it's a force time graph, what I'm really after is the area under the graph here. Well, it should be pretty easy to see since we know that impulse is change in momentum or force times time. Well, our area here two seconds times 1,000 newtons is gonna be 2,000 newton seconds 
times plus, pardon me, negative 1,000 Newton seconds, so minus 1,000 Newton seconds, and that has to be equal to our change in momentum, or m delta v, assuming that mass stays constant, which is a reasonable assumption to make in this case. So 2,000 Newton seconds minus 1,000 Newton seconds, I get 1,000 Newton seconds equals m delta v. Our m is 2,000 kilograms delta v. Therefore, delta v, our change in velocity, is going to be 1,000 Newton seconds over 2,000 kilograms. Comes out to be 0 0.5 meters per second. Using that force time graph to help us solve problems. Now you can get much more in depth with these, but that should at least give you the basics. If you need more information or are looking for more help, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks everyone and make it a great day.